Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 15th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So yesterday I talked about Hankito, which was sort of a run-of-the-mill malware that relied on the victims to enable macros and very typical sort of mass emailed malware. Well, today we sort of have the counterpart, Boyan, as part of his day job, ran into an Excel spreadsheet that was used in a spare phishing attack and, well, also relied on the victim enabling macros. Now, this was one of those Excel 4 macros, as it turned out, and a bit difficult or more difficult than usual to actually analyze. In these targeted attacks, uh, you often, of course, find more custom methodologies uh, being used in order to evade various defenses. And this is essentially what Boyan had to deal with here. And he's walking you step by step through how he solved the various challenges that the attacker put up here in order to prevent a reverse analysis of the malware. In the end, Boyan had to resort to dynamic analysis, which essentially just means you run the macro and see what it does. Of course, often you're using debuggers for Excel 4 macro as well. There isn't really sort of a debugger per se. So Boyan shows how he coerced Excel into essentially acting as a debugger, inserting breakpoints by taking advantage of the halt command that's available in Excel. So, of course, if you run through something similar, uh, let us know and uh, let us know if you find this particular article helpful. And then we got an interesting vulnerability that's currently unpatched and exploitable in Windows that appears to corrupt NTFS volumes, but actually a reboot usually fixes the problem. So as soon as, for example, you're changing to a directory with that name, even if the directory doesn't exist, you are getting an error message saying that the file or directory is corrupted and unreadable and the system will reboot. After the reboot, everything appears to be okay most of the time, but some users have reported that the corruption persists and the system will not reboot. We have not been able uh, to verify this. So not sure if something else was going on in the cases where it led to a more persistent damage. But with the file name now widely known and uh, various uh, methods are being discovered and discussed in how this bug can be triggered, be careful. And if you get the message that the file or directory is corrupted and unreadable, well, reboot and hope for the best. And Cisco this week published 23 different security advisories, four of which uh, do include vulnerabilities that are rated as high. Bit concerning are a number of remote code execution and denial of service vulnerabilities in Cisco's small business RV110W, RV130, and RV130W, as well as RV215W routers. These routers reached end of life, and as a result, uh, Cisco did announce that there are vulnerabilities, but Cisco will not uh, release a patch. So while there's no patch and while these are remote code execution vulnerabilities, uh, what helps probably here somewhat is that a user needs to be authenticated to the admin interface in order to take advantage of uh, these vulnerabilities. But if you do have any of these routers, well, it's probably time to just replace them. Other vulnerabilities with the high rating affect the Cisco AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client, and that's a Windows DLL injection vulnerability, as well as a purge escalation vulnerability in the Cisco Connected Mobile Experiences. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And remember, we do have the contest going on this month. Uh, notify me of any inaccuracy, any mistakes I'm making in these podcasts this month, and you'll be entered in a drawing for a Raspberry Pi. Thanks, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.